In today's lab, we're going to be building a fairly simple two degree of freedom RP manipulator. That means that our first joint will be revolute and the second joint will be prismatic. We're building a manipulator that has only two degrees of freedom because it'll be easier for us to do our inverse kinematics and eventually the Jacobian matrix for this manipulator than it would to do it with a three degree of freedom manipulator. So we'll start with this more simple manipulator to learn how to do some of these more complicated mathematical things like inverse kinematics. We'll start out this lab today by creating our code and setting up our PSOC environment. So go ahead and open PSOC and we're going to start by creating a new file or a new project rather. Select PSOC 4200 if that's the PSOC you have and make sure you have empty schematic selected and then click OK. It'll take a moment to start up your new project and we'll start by creating our top design. Open up the ports and pins menu and find the digital output pins. We're going to put three of these on our screen because we're going to need one digital output for the servo and two for the DC motor of our prismatic joint. I'll just zoom in here a bit so you can see better. Then go to the digital functions menu and get the TC PWM mode PWM block. We're going to place three of those on our screen and we're going to wire one of the digital output pins to each of these PWMs. One of the PWMs is for the servo and remember we have two for the motor because we need one PWM to move in the forward direction and another PWM to move in the reverse direction. Now scroll down in the menu to the system menu and we're going to find the clocks. We're going to get one clock for each of our PWMs and wire it to the input, the clock input of the PWM. There we go. Now let's go ahead and set the settings on these PWMs right away. PWM1 is what I'm going to use for the servo. So click on the PWM tab and set the prescaler to 4, set the period to 60,000, and the compare value to 0. We learned why these settings are what they are back in Robotics 1. Click OK. And then PWM2 and PWM3 are both for the motors. So for those, we'll leave the prescaler 1, set the period to 100, and the compare value to 0. We'll do the same with the other motor PWM. We're doing this so that when we write a value to the compare, value, it will indicate a motor power. So if we would write 100 to the compare value, that would mean 100% power. Now, because we're going to be using feedback control for our motor, we also need to read the sensor. So expand the analog and ADC menu and get one of these sequencing SAR ADC blocks. We need this to read the potentiometer that provides feedback from the slider. Double click on this block and we'll set its settings. Change the VREF to VDDA and then click on the channels tab and reduce the number of channels to one. Then go set the mode for this one channel to single. Then click OK because that's all the settings we need here. Then let's go find the pins once again and this time we're going to get an analog pin because a potentiometer is an analog sensor. So we'll wire this analog pin to the input. 
Next, it's time to go set our pins. Now, in this pin window, it's going to be really hard for me to keep track of which pin is which, so let's go and give our pins some better names here. I'm going to change pin 1 to be called servo pin, because that pin is wired to the servo PWM block. And then these other two pins that are wired to the PWMs for the motors, I'm going to rename them motor pin 1 and motor pin 2. Then the analog pin, which is my input, I'm going to also rename it. Let's call it potentiometer pin and then click OK. Now, when I go back to the pin window, it's much easier for me to see which pin is which. Let's make the servo pin. Uh, we need to pick a PWM pin here. Let's make it pin 2, 4. Let's make the motor pins be pin one zero and let's make the other motor pin be pin one one and then set the potentiometer pin to pin two zero. Now we can go and write some C code. I'm going to start by cleaning up the screen, deleting all of these things that we don't need, these comments that are in green and also the CY global enable line. There we go. I'm also going to build this code right away just to make sure that everything's okay, that I've set up the project correctly and to load the um, project.h file into memory so that this error goes away. I just want to check, make sure that everything's okay. So I'll wait until the build finishes here it might take a while because we just set our pins and compiling always takes extra long when you change pins. So the build succeeded, so let's go ahead and write some code. I'm going to start out my code by starting each of these PWMs. I'm just going to do that so that I don't forget to do that later on. I'll start all three of the PWMs here. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is declare some of my variables. I'm going to declare a variable called theta, and actually I want this to be a decimal value, so I'll make it float theta, and I'll set it equal to zero. This variable will represent the angle of my servo. Now I need to convert that value from degrees into a number of ticks that I can write to the PWM. So I'm right away also going to create a variable called ticks that I can use to convert theta in degrees into ticks of the timer. Now I need to write this conversion equation to convert degrees to ticks, and we learned this equation back in Robotics 1, so I'm just going to give you this equation here. That converts theta in degrees to ticks of the timer. And now that I have the angle in ticks, I can write that value to the PWM compare. Now I'm also going to initialize my analog to digital converter. 
And the first command I'm going to put here is just the start command, just like I did with the PWMs. We need to start the ADC. I also need a line that will start the conversion process. There we go. Now let's create a couple more variables. I'm going to create a variable called sensor, which will be a 16-bit integer, and I'll use this variable to store the value red from the potentiometer. Down here in the for loop is where we'll actually read the sensor value. The first thing I'm going to put here is a setting that tells the PSOC not to record the value of the analog to digital converter until the conversion process has completed. So I want to wait for a result before getting a value. Now I can read the actual sensor. Get result 16 is the command. And I still have an error here. What did I do wrong? Oh, and you need to put zero in between those two parentheses to indicate that it is the zeroth sensor or the first sensor that we want to be reading. Now, I'm also going to create another 16-bit integer called D3. I'm going to use D3 to represent the position of the slider where I want the slider to go to. So now I can create these if statements that will get my slider to go to the target position. We're just going to use on off control here because we don't really need the smoothness or precision precision that we can get with PID. So we're going to use the slightly simpler on off control method. So if the sensor value is less than the desired sensor value D3, we're going to write compare 100 to the first motor pin at the same time that we write a compare value of 0 to the other motor pin. I'll use curly brackets around my if statement because that's part of the C syntax. Now else if the sensor value is greater than the target value D3. Uh, oh, I also need a little bit of a buffer zone here to make my motion a little bit smoother. So I'll do D3 minus 10 up here and D3 plus 10 down here. In this case, I'm going to write compare 0 to the first motor pin and I'll write compare 100 to the other motor pin. I know that the motor power 100 might be too much. I'll reduce that later on after I look at how smooth or jerky the motion is. So now else, that is if the sensor value is the right value, the target value, I want to turn off the motor. So I'll write compare 0 to both of those pins. Then at the end, I'll put a little bit of a delay so we have enough time to turn on and off the correct PWM pins. Now I'm going to build right away to look for errors. If your build succeeds, move on. If your build does not succeed, stop here for a moment and see if you can 
uh, troubleshoot. If your build succeeds, then go ahead and program the PSOC by clicking that little program chip. Now, we haven't built anything yet, so let's go ahead and build our manipulator now that we have some code that can run on it. Start by passing two of these 632 screws up through the board and attach a, an offset or a standoff to each one of these screws. So we're going to use two standoffs to hold our revolute joint to the board. Tighten those down. And now we'll go get a servo. And I'll use two more 632 screws to connect the servo to those two standoffs. It's often a good idea to put both screws in loosely, first of all, and then after they're both in place, go ahead and tighten them both down. Okay, now turn the horn of your servo all the way to one side and then rotate it 90 degrees more so that it's in its center position. And once you've got that horn in its center position, halfway between fully clockwise and fully counterclockwise, we're going to attach one of these sliders in such a way that the slider lines up with the screw here. We're going to put a little screw through one of these holes and screw it into the tapped hole on the servo horn. We're using a, a 256 screw, these little tiny black screws. As you screw this down, you're going to have to be careful not to tighten down the rubber belt that moves the slider. So I'm going to use my screwdriver to, to move this rubber belt out of the way so that my screw does not tighten the belt down. I'll lift it up a little bit there and then I'll tighten this screw down. And I'm going to tighten it down pretty good. Get it nice and tight. Alright, now that we have both of our joints connected together, I'm going to do some uh, hooking up of the wires. So get your P-sock, slide it into view a bit here. And we'll start by hooking up the servo. We'll connect the black wire of the servo to a ground pin on the P-sock. See if we can find a ground pin. There's one. Next, I'm going to take a wire a jumper wire and I'm going to connect the red wire of the servo to a VDD pin on the P-sock. If you're using a new P-sock or a different P-sock than you used last semester, make sure that your P-sock is set to 5 volts rather than 3.3 volts and you can check that by looking at the jumper which is right here. My jumper is set to 5 volts. Now we'll take a jumper wire and connect it to the white wire. And 
and now we'll find the correct pin here on the back of the P sock. We're looking for pin 2.4. There it is right there. And when you connect this wire to pin 2.4, since we've already programmed the PSOC, your servo should move to its zero degree position. And mine already did it in the background here. It should be holding its position. Now since this is the zero degree position, we're going to mark this position. Take a dry erase marker and you're going to try and draw a line that will go through the screw of your uh, servo here. So I'm going to draw it back. It's a little hard to see with the angle of my camera. The line I just drew is hidden. I'm going to change the angle of my camera a little bit so you can see what I did here. Here we go. I drew a line that would intersect with this screw and I labeled this X0. This line is also right underneath the slider even though it doesn't look like it. So now let's go back to our code and set a theta angle of 180 degrees and program the PSOC. When you do that, the servo will move to the 180 degree position. Now you'll notice, as we learned in the first semester, it doesn't actually go to 180 degrees. It's at an angle relative to where it was at zero. So we're going to fix this equation here to sort of tune our servos. Now, when we did this in the first semester, we had to play around with these numbers quite a lot. I found that for mine, just changing the first number to 6900 worked well. So you can go ahead and just skip to this and see if that works for you. Change your first number to 6900 and then program your PSOC and see if this works for you. If it does work, your slider will move into a position that's pretty well straight in line with the first line that you drew as your X0 axis. If it does, go ahead and take your marker and we're going to draw a line back along the slider in this position as well. I'll take my marker and I'm going to try and draw a line that's right underneath the slider and intersects with the screw. And this one I'm going to label as negative x0. Go back to your code now and change the angle to 90 degrees and program the PSOC. So the PSOC should move the servo into its 90 degree position and let's make one last mark here. Use your marker to draw underneath the slider along its range of motion and we're going to label this axis as Y0. So we now have our base frame drawn in correctly. Now take a ruler and line up the zero centimeter mark with the screw of the servo and use some tape to tape it down. You want to tape it lightly because it's important that the slider can still slide freely. I'm going to bend it back here, fold it over, and then tape the other end as well so that it lightly stays attached to the slider. We're going to use this to figure out what value of the sensor corresponds to which centimeter position.
if you don't have one of these H bridge chips attached to your breadboard, take one and, and press it in there. And now, here I'm showing you a wiring diagram of how you should wire up this chip. Pause the video here and wire this up as shown in this diagram. Also, wire up your potentiometer while you're at it. You'll need to figure out which wire is the wiper the same way we learned to do in the first semester. Once you get it wired up correctly, the slider should hold its position uh, somewhere approximately one quarter of the way from one side, probably this side of the slider, to this side, about one quarter of the way. Your slider might be jiggling back and forth a little bit, or maybe a lot, and you will need to adjust some of the values in your code to get the slider to be stable. Remember that some of the things we can change to get the slider to be stable include the motor power. You can reduce the motor power to be less than 100% in order to get this slider to be more stable. Here's an example. I'm going to change my motor power to 80% and uh, run this again and in my case reducing the motor power really helped my stability a lot. Now let's go back up to the top of the code here and we're going to change this D3 value into a floating point value. I'd like to be able to enter this D3 value in units of centimeters rather than units of sensor value. So I'll create a new variable that's an int 16 and I'm going to call it slider. Slider will be the position of the slider in units of sensor value. Now I need to come up with a conversion that will convert the position of the slider in units of centimeters into the position of the slider in units of sensor value. And I'm now going to show you how we can do that. When the slider is in this position, its centimeter position is 1, and its sensor value is 0. So I'm going to write that down to remember that. One centimeter is equal to zero in units of sensor value. Now, when I slide the slider all the way to the other position, its centimeter value is about 11.5. Yes, about 11.5. The sensor value here is 2048. The reason why it's 2048 is because the sensor value is a 12-bit signed value. So the largest value we can represent is 2 to the 11th. Okay, so now I have two points here that, re that represent a conversion between centimeters and sensor value. So I'm going to draw a plot where the x-axis is centimeters. That's going to be my input. The output that I want to calculate is the corresponding sensor value. And I know two points on this plot. A sensor value of 0 corresponds to 1 centimeter and a 2048 sensor value corresponds to the centimeter position 
11.5. So I have two points and they define a line. If I can find the equation of this line, I have a conversion equation to go from centimeters to sensor value. So I'm going to write an equation to calculate sensor value. I'll use the equation of a line, y equals mx plus b. So I first need to find the slope of this line. The rise is 2048 and the run is 11.5 minus 1 or 10.5. The x in this plot is centimeters and now I need to find the y-intercept. I don't know where the y-intercept in is right now, but I can pick one point on this plot and plug it in in order to find the value of b. So I'm going to pick this one point that is a sensor value of zero corresponds to a centimeter value of one. So I'll plug in zero for sensor value and I'll plug in 1 for centimeters and I'll solve this equation for B. So B is equal to negative 2048 over 10.5. I now have a complete equation that takes centimeters as input and calculates sensor value. Let's go put this equation into the code. Slider that is the position in sensor value is equal to 2048 divided by 10.5 times the position in centimeters which we're calling D3 minus 2048 divided by 10.5 that's what we found for B now I'm going to scroll down in my code and I'll replace D3 which is now in units of centimeters and put in slider instead because slider is in units of sensor value. I'm going to program the PSOC and see if this worked. The slider should slide to the position you've indicated. So let's try putting in a position. I'm going to put in 9.0 for D3 and I'm going to program the PSOC. If this is working correctly, the slider should slide fairly gently to the 9 centimeter position. If this worked for you, try putting in a couple of additional values and make sure that the slider slides to the correct position each time. Try values that are close to zero and also values that are close to the end like 9 or 10.